So I'm prepping for a course that I'm teaching in this upcoming semester on an introduction to proof writing. And I came around this really nice example. So this example came from the University of Chicago math website where they were covering something called the pigeonhole principle. So let's look at the problem. Let's suppose we have 101 positive integers whose sum is 300. And then we arrange these positive integers in a circle then our goal is to show that we can find a sequence of consecutive numbers around this circle or along this circle such that they sum to 200. And by the way, about that proof writing course, I'm actually recording videos for it because I'm flipping the class and they're all available on the second channel math major. And furthermore, we're going to turn the ads off on Math Major once the Patreon gets big enough. With any luck, it's already big enough and there will be no ads on all of that learning content. Okay, so I've started over here with a smaller example. So it's kind of an interesting prospect of figuring out what a smaller example might be. But in this case, we can replace 101 with 11. 300 with 30 and 200 with 20 and that'll work out. So here what I have is a list of 11 numbers that add up to 30. So you can check they add up to 30. We have 1, 5, 2, 4, so on and so forth. And now we're going to take these 11 numbers and arrange them in a circle. And we don't have to arrange them in any sort of order around this circle, but I will arrange them kind of in the order that I have written. Just recognize that the way I have written is like semi-random. Okay, so let's do that. So we'll maybe put one up here, and then we'll put five, two, four there. So here's where we are now. And then three, and then maybe we'll put two here five here, so now we're there, and now we have one, three, one, three. So my spacing isn't great, but I think you get the idea. So if we add all the way around the circle, we get 30, but we should be able to, based off this being a simplification of our bigger problem, find an arc along this circle, for if we add the numbers along that arc, we get 20. So maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can find that arc right now. Okay, so here's the arc that works in this case. We'll start at two and then sum around until I believe we have to sum until five or until this number three. So let's see, we have two plus four is six, plus three is nine, 10, 11. 11 plus five gives us 16. Here we have 17, 18, 19, 20. So we found an arc that sums to 20. But now let's notice that since the whole circle adds up to 30, we know the remaining arc is going to add up to 10. And that might seem like a trivial uh, observation right now, but that'll actually be pretty important towards our proof of this general result. So I'd just like to point out that we haven't proven the simplified case where we replace this with, the, this with 11, this with 300, and this with 20, but we've kind of indicated by an example why it seems like it might be true. Now let's jump into this larger proof. So I'm going to start by introducing some notation. So let's take these 101 numbers and the first thing that we'll do is place them on a circle. So let's say this is our circle. And so just imagine the 101 numbers being around the circle. Now we're going to pick one of them, let's say it's right here, and we're going to give it a name. And the name of that number will be a sub 1. Then the one right next to it will be a sub 2, then a sub 3. And then maybe one in the middle will be a sub n, and then way up here near, near the end we'll have a sub 100 and a sub 101. So we've 
replaced all of the numbers around the circle. And then let's also make a little bit of an observation. And this observation is based off the information given to us. So there are positive integers who add to 300. That means we have a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 plus a101 equals 300. Okay, so that's good. But now, since we want a consecutive sequence to add to 200, that motivates us to define something called a sequence of partial sums. Because a sequence of partial sums is a special case of a consecutive sequence. So let's do that down here. So I'll just put, say, let's define S sub m equal to a sub one plus a sub two plus all the way up to a sub m. And this is gonna be true for m between one and 101. So in fact, we have 101 terms of this new sequence. So the first term would just be a sub one. The second term is the sum along this arc from a one to a two. The third term will be the sum along the arc from a one to a three and so on and so forth. And now here's where we're gonna use something called the pigeonhole principle. You don't have to know what that really means for this problem because we'll talk our way through how it works. So notice we've got 101 numbers which are these partial sums and each of them have two ending digits, but there are only a hundred possibilities for those ending digits. They could be of the form something zero zero, something zero one, so on and so forth. So the way to write that down a little bit more carefully is like this. Let's place the numbers S100 to S101 into the boxes written as follows. So we've got one box for numbers that end in two zero. So I'll just write it as star zero zero. And then we have another box that ends in zero one. So that'll be star zero one. We'll have star zero two. All the way up to our very last box will be star nine nine. So these boxes are defined by the ending digits. But if you've got 101 things and you place them into 100, and 100 boxes, that means that two of these objects will end up in the same box. And that's exactly the pigeonhole principle or a special case of the pigeonhole principle. Okay, so let's write down what we get out of this. So we have two terms from our sequence. I'll call those terms S sub N and then S sub N plus K such that S sub n and S sub n plus k are both of the form star a, b. So I'll just write there equal to star a, b. The star is gonna be different though for each one of them. We'll have different starting terms. And we know that for sure because S sub n plus k is strictly bigger than S sub n. Recall that S sub n is gonna be the sum of a1 up to a n and then S sub n plus k will be a1 up to a n and then further. So you're adding more natural numbers on there. But now if S n and S n plus k end in the same two digits, then if we take their difference, their difference ends in zero, zero. So we have S sub n plus k minus S sub n equals star zero, zero. Okay. But let's notice that S sub n plus k minus S sub n is definitely bigger than zero. So let's collect this information. So this thing is bigger than zero, and we know that because S sub n plus k is bigger than S sub n by our previous argument. But then it's also less than 300. We know that it's for sure less than 300 because the sum of all of the numbers equals 300, but this is the sum of less than all of them. But what does that tell us? That tells us that S sub n plus K minus S sub n can only be 100 or 200. Well, why is that? Well, those are the only two numbers between zero and 300, not including zero and not including 300, that end in two zeros. Now, this may not seem super helpful at the moment, but it is pretty helpful after we take the difference of these two partial sums and realize what we really have here. 
So let's do that now. So we've got S sub n plus K minus S sub n is in fact A n plus one plus A n plus two all the way up to A n plus K. So what does that mean? That means this string of numbers is equal to 100 or it's equal to 200. Being from the set 100 to 200 means you're either one of them. Okay, so why is that? Well, let's add some more terms along our circle. Let's maybe add a n plus one, and then way over here we'll add a n plus k. Maybe we'll add the next one as well, a n plus k plus one. Great. So now let's notice that s n plus k is the sum from a one all the way up to a n k. So maybe I'll underline this in the magenta. That's the arc that we're getting out of S n plus K. Okay, good. And then S n is the arc from A1 all the way up to A n. So it's like a beginning part of that arc. But now if you take the difference in these, you're subtracting this overlap, and that leaves us with the arc from a n plus one to a n plus k. So that's this entire difference right here. And then let's like carry on our color coding here. I should have underlined that in green. Okay, good. Well now let's notice that our goal is for consecutive numbers on this circle to add up to 200 and perhaps they equal to 200. In fact, if they're equal to 200, then we're done. So all we have to do is look at the case when they're not equal to 200. In other words, they're equal to 100. So we just did some arguments and we determined that the sum from a n plus one to a n plus k could take on two values, either 200, in which case we're done because we have consecutive numbers that add up to our special amount, or they could be equal to 100, in which case there's a little bit of work to do. So let's just go off this what if they're equal to 100. So let's underline that in blue because that's what we have over here. So let's look at the case, like I said, for where the sum along this arc equals 100. But let's recall that the sum all the way around equals 300. So if the sum all the way around equals 300, whereas the sum along this arc equals 100, then that means the remaining bit equals 200. So we have the sum all the way around, maybe the long way, which goes through this turnover point, equals 200. Great. Then maybe we could write that down in an equation as follows. So let's notice that 200 is the same thing as 300 minus 100. Well, I think that's pretty clear. But 300 is equal to A1 plus A2 ending at A101 by our hypothesis over here. And then 100 is this partial sum here from AN plus one to AN plus K. So minus AN plus one added up all the way to AN plus K. But then by our picture, we can see that those are consecutive when we do the switch over at the top there. And we could write this as consecutive numbers a n plus k plus one plus dot 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 all the way up to a 101 plus a one. There's the turnover all the way up to a n. So we have consecutive numbers that sum to 200 really in either of those cases. So like I pointed out before, I did this example in a lecture video for my proof writing course on the second channel. If you'd like to learn the ins and outs of basic proof writing, I think that's a good place to check out. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.